this is the mud volcano here in Gabistan. Gabistan, right? Gabistan. Gabistan. Here is another mud volcano. Changed its level several times. So, like here, one, for, one time it was up, then it was down, up, down, and then starting from 20,000 BC it receded, and there you will see the coastline. That's the sea, the Caspian the coastline of the Caspian Sea. Um, by the way, you can see that these cliffs are standing on top of each other. The reason for that is this is also, I mean, Apart from being volcanic in origin, this place is also very seismic. And because of that, uh, a whole lot of earthquakes happened, uh, and these cliffs, some of them broke off and landed on top of others. So that's why you see such a view here. This stone is a special stone. Uh, and now I'm going to need volunteers, at least one. <laughs> Pick up a stone. Play something musical on this stone. Yeah. <laughs> You're a terrible musician. <laughs> Beginner. To be precise. <laughs> At least it could be elementary if you did this. That's, the That's only nice. Thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The reason for uh, the sound coming out of the stone um, is this stone has microscopic holes in its structure and also its cavities. So when you hit it, uh, it creates resonance. Because if there's resonance, you get the sound. The stone is called Gaval, Gaval Dash, Gaval Stone. And you know, there is this instrument called Gaval in Turkey. Like it's small, kind of resembles a guitar, but it's not a guitar. They play it like this. Mm, yeah, I saw that. So that's Gaval. It's made of the stone, by the way. That's why it um, gives off that kind of sound. And one also, also another interesting fact about the stone, you can see that this stone stands on two other stones. The reason for that is, if you put this stone on the ground, the resonance will cease. So you, it has to stand on two other stones. By the way, bear in mind that these petroglyphs are, don't pertain to the same age don't pertain to the same period. Some of them can be, could have been drawn in 20,000 BC. Some of them could have been drawn in 10,000 BC. So, and you can understand that from the appearance of the petroglyphs. Because some of them look very old, some of them look a bit fresh. You'll notice it. So as you can see, this is a man, this is a woman. Men were usually very strong, very tall, very sturdy. And that was because of the Ice Age. Because you understand that the more you encounter cold, the more you encounter harsh weather, harsh conditions, uh, the more sturdy and tough your body becomes. So in this area, most people were very strong people, also the women. But women, you will see in all of the petroglyphs, that women were shorter. There is a notion in, uh, in the world, amongst archaeologists, that there were gigantic people in the past. You've probably heard about them, right? Gigantic people, three to four meters tall, mm. like two meters tall, it was the lowest actually. Uh, but this place shows, I mean these petroglyphs shows, that the general trend was women were always shorter than men. All of these petroglyphs show that. So what I mean is at that time, people might think that maybe people looked differently. 
because nobody knows, right? I mean, apart from these petroglyphs and some petroglyphs in, found in Europe, there's not that much information about the people. Here. This cave is called Balazava Cave, and uh, they use this cave as living quarters as well. Uh, like they could hide from rain, from animals, uh, and also you can see that there's quite a lot of petroglyphs here. Um, actually, more than 250. This one cave contains more than 250 petroglyphs, made at different periods of time. Um, and you will see here that uh, most petroglyphs show humans and bulls. Bulls mean oxen. Uh, but in general, as we walk towards the end, you will notice that most of the petroglyphs resemble oxen. Uh, why oxen? Because, by the way, this is a good friend of mine in the entire Bogostani National Park. <laughs> this cat is a very famous cat. Hello. If you start, if you stroke it, she won't let you go. So it'll be well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oxen were a very important um, People could hunt them, but at the same time they could use them in ritualistic purposes. Um, there's one petrol grip uh, on the other side of this mountain which shows a man holding an ox hmm. on, a, on the tip of the spear. So it's believed by the archaeologists that they thought that when they did that, no, when, when they conducted their ritual like that, it would mean that they would get more animals to hunt, more benefits from that. So that means that all of their rituals mostly meant that they asked that the gods that they believed in to send them more animals to hunt, more rainwater, different things that they could use on their daily basis. So I am here actually in the museum here in Gavistan. You can see this cliff arts, they made it artificially here on the wall. And look at this. The animals and they tried to show the lifestyle of the people at that time of the age interesting so right now we are here in front of the bibi habit mosque this is a very famous mosque in baku and it's a touristic place as well so let's visit it's friday let's go inside and let's visit this beautiful mosque this is the mosque from outside look at the minaret let's go inside and let's check out how is the mosque that is the inner part of the uh, bibi habit mosque and there is a grave of uh, Hakima Khanum, Bibi, Hazrat Bibi Hakima Khanum. So it's time to have some lunch. We are here to have some lunch, some Azri food. This is the restaurant. This is the food. I ate it, it was very tasty. This is the soup, some salad. This is Atishka in Azerbaijan, Baku. This is a center of Zoroastrianism, the religion that uh, worship fire. And here is the place where the fire is coming actually from the ground. I will take you inside, let's go. When people passed through this place, they saw that uh, the fire was burning on its own. So that was unheard of for them. They didn't know that uh, it was because of the gas coming out of the uh, from beneath the ground. Well, when they saw that the fires were burning on their own because of the gas that was coming out, they, to be precise, it's methane instinct, survival instinct, 
um, sexual instinct. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So right now I'm here at Atishka. As you can see, the sacred place for Zoroastrianism. The people who worship fire. And that is one of their room, motel, you can say. That's how they were living. As you can see this is stable. Your life is living and then reincarnating again. Zoroastrians believed in reincarnation deeply. So, and they thought that reincarnation could happen in two forms. Like the, the first would be, um, uh, in, what I mean by two forms is that you could be reincarnated either into an animal or a human. And uh, uh, whether you reincarnate into an animal or a human depended on your deeds mm. in your past life. Yeah. If you had, if you made good deeds, then you would be born as a human. If not, then as an animal. So right now I'm here at Yanar Dagh, the famous mountain of fire. The natural gas is coming from this uh, mountain, and that's why this fire is burning from for like million of years. It's very warm here. If I go closer, it's like a natural heater. It means that you will come back. I once tried the opposite. I tried throwing a coin to see if I do not come back. I came back. <laughs> Okay, let me let me do the same thing. Let's see if I come back. <laughs> I don't believe in superstition. I will throw the foreign Hungarian foreign. <laughs> it's five foreigns. Let's throw it here and let's see if I come back ever again. Here we go. Oh, it came back. <laughs> it means I'm coming back.